everybody, I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. I, I'm continuing this series of webinars. I don't know for how long. Um, it has been three years, and this is number 304. <laughs> by the way, this webinar is brought to you by the hay soaker. Are you tired of the drudgery of and mess of soaking hay? The hay soaker makes hay soaking a easy, convenient, and hassle-free. It's the smart way to soak hay. For more information, go to thehaysoaker.com. Not today because the website's down <laughs> to learn more, but it'll be back up soon. <laughs> Good times. Uh, and Good tonight, time. my guest is Heather O'Leary, Dr. Heather O'Leary. Um, she is a dear friend as well as an excellent vet, and she is going to introduce herself because she knows herself better than I do. So take it away, Heather. <laughs> That's a big assumption. But anyway, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Heather O'Leary, and uh, I live out here in eastern New York. It's a kind of a breezy, blustery day here, right? When they say March comes in like a like a lion. So um, we're, we're, we're dealing with all kinds of weather. And um, that's important because uh, for those of us who have horses, right, we're, we're intimately connected to the weather. Uh, it affects us and our horses uh, deeply. We always have to plan things out. Um, Maybe a little bio. Uh, I graduated from Cornell University in 1999. Uh, then I packed myself off to Lexington, Kentucky, where I did a one-year medical surgical internship at Rood and Riddle Equine Hospital. Stuck around in Lexington for a few more years until I moved up here to uh, to the Catskills uh, in New York, where I did general practice equine for a while and. Um, and then I learned acupuncture and then I learned chiropractic and then I grabbed my pair of beads and my flying carpet and off I went into the into the hinterland of since two, 2010. Uh, I've been the owner and proprietor of Tessalu Veterinary Services, where I offer um, acupuncture, chiropractic, herbal therapy, functional medicine, sure foot pads, tuning forks, beamer, and whatever else I can find in my toolkit to help people's pets and horses live their absolute best lives. Uh, if you wanted to check out what I'm up to, you can go to O'LearyVet.com. That's O-L-E-A-R-Y-V-E-T.com. Uh, I've got a few things up there. It's a brand new website because- It's beautiful. It's, not... it's a beautiful <laughs> website. You. I looked at your website and I was like, I immediately messaged you like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Who did it for me? Yeah. It, it, well, it better be beautiful because it, it took me a long time. Uh, and and it took me a long time once I started, but I, I've had this practice for um, 13 years and that's my very first iteration of a website because I sort of, uh, I, I guess I enjoy hiding. I would say under a rock, but maybe I'm going to say behind a tree uh, or maybe somewhere in the woods with my Jack Russell Terriers is where I often like to be. And, um, you know, so that's where I've been instead of online. Somebody has raised their hand. Uh, and so I don't know. Okay, she did. All right. Yeah. Um, if was, anybody has questions to numerology, she said. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're definitely they're they're definitely there's something to there's something to almost everything. Yes, I'm not sure what actually, um, but that's a very good statement because that's actually true. There is something almost, almost yeah to almost everything. We we you know so so that's really how I. Um, I was gifted with a curious mind and uh, I've also been gifted with mentors who have encouraged me to continue to be curious. Um, my, my mentors, both professional and personal, uh, have been very, very encouraging. So I'm saying that because I encourage all of you to have a curious mind. We never know. There's, there's always more than one answer. Um, and there's probably at least three or four, if not many, many more ways to frame the question. So in this in this equine world of of dogma, should be ECMA, I don't know. But in this, you know, people, you know what I'm talking about. Um, beware the person who presents absolute certainty. Um, I, personally, I don't I don't trust them because I, the more I learn, the more I know that I don't know. So I'm going to encourage you with your horses and maybe even in other aspects of your life to just keep. Keep a curious mind, not a completely open, you know, vulnerable mind, but a curious mind. Keep asking questions. Why is that? And if that's true, then what would that mean? And does that really make any sense? And then you go and you look for the evidence in your world and uh, and, and 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 see what you decide and then take another step in another direction. So right? what are we going to talk about tonight, Heather? Well, the topic that we had chosen was um, creating an enriched environment for your horse. Um, and Wendy reminded me that 
the, the, the word enriched environment may or may not be familiar to a lot of people. So what do I even mean by that? So an enriched environment, I'm talking about um, the environment that your horse is in, you know, over a 24 hour period, over a seven day period, uh, where is your horse? Is your horse in a stall, in a field, in a paddock, in a ring, you know, with you in the saddle, with you walking around, all, all of those things constitute their environment. The other horses, the other caretakers, the other boarders, if they exist, other animals that may be on the, on the farm, all of that constitutes their environment. And, you know, horses, I just, you know, I, I actually didn't even plan it this way, but I told you all to have a curious mind. And I, I believe that horses have a curious mind. And I think that they, they, uh, they, they really benefit from having things to do to occupy that, that mind. So creating an enriched environment means we create an environment that supports their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. And, um, and how do we do that? Well, let's, let's, let's chat. You know, let's 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 chat about how we might do that. I, I was going to share my screen for just a second and show you a cute little diagram um, that I have. If everybody can see that, um, it's a cute little star. Um, it's talking about preventive medicine. It was made made for people, right? But preventive medicine and self care. Well, how about preventive medicine and horse care? And what do we mean when we're talking about preventative medicine? Um, we're talking about looking after the physical, mental, and emotional well-being, um, but also the spiritual well-being. And I strongly believe that horses and all animals have a deep spiritual life. And then see that see that over on the right, the social, the social well-being. And we know for horses that's incredibly important incredibly important and then in the center of the circle are diet exercise sleep and recovery and we know that if 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 we feed them a crummy diet and they never get exercise or they get the wrong kind of exercise and they can't sleep and they don't have any time to recover then then it's going to be really really hard to get the stuff on the outside of the circle functioning well so let's start first maybe talking about their a, a physically enriched environment um and what does that mean? Um, and, and that means, right? What are what are horses made for? They're, they're they're made to move, right? They're not they're not built for standing still. And actually, standing still is really hard, whether you're a horse or a dog or a human. And if you doubt that, um, then please, everybody watching, whether it's a recording or you're here live, go ahead and stand up right now. It just, my clock just turned to six fifteen. Go ahead and stand up, and stay standing up for the rest of the webinar. And then tell me how easy that is. And oh, by the way, you can't cock your hip. You have to be standing equally on both feet. So go ahead and do that. And um, maybe type in the chat when you finally give up and sit down or have to cock a hip or do something that's not standing there. Um, because if you haven't practiced standing, um, you, you probably aren't very good at it. Uh, I, I know that I'm not. I, I knew I couldn't be a surgeon uh, because I just couldn't stand for that long at, at a surgery table. So horses are made to move. That's a really, really long-winded way of saying horses are made to move, right? And so are people. I'm saying it in the same breath, actually. <laughs> and so are people, right, exactly. Not my area of expertise, humans, um, obviously, otherwise I'd probably be in much better shape, but so are so are people. And so and so we want to give our horses an environment if we're going to support their um, physical well-being and give them a physically enriched environment, then we need for them to be able to move. So when somebody tells me that their horse gets to spend, uh, they, they have free access to the outside and they show me, you know, maybe a, a 12 by 12 stall that's always open with a um, kind of a run out that's maybe you know, 20 by 20 or something like that. And they say, see, you know, they can come and go all they want. Well, yeah, um, they're, they're, that's more movement than being inside the stall closed for sure, but it's not really a whole lot of movement. Um, and, uh, and, and then I, I ask people again, like I said in the beginning, you know, keep a curious mind and, and create questions and then go look and see what's going on. Um, watch your horse. He, he can move. And I'm going to say he for a horse. Sometimes I might say she, but please, he, she, they. Um, anyway, he can move, but does he? Um, and even if he's got a 10 acre paddock or a 20 acre paddock, does he, 
Do you find him in all corners of the paddock when you go visit your horse at different times of day and different times of the year? Do you find him in all the different parts of the paddock or is he always in the same three or four spots? So if he's not moving around a lot, then he's not moving around a lot and we need to do something about that. And, and a, a really great way that I don't know when it was invented or who, who, but started talking about putting in things like track systems, right? Does everybody know what a track system it was, is? It, uh, was it Pete Ramey or was it, uh, who's the other gentleman? I have the book. I got the book from the guy who kind of started it. Um, I can't remember his name. Somebody might know. He can pop it in the chat. Oh, Jamie Jackson. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Paddock Paradise. He's the one. He wrote a book about it. Um, and, and, you know, it's uh, it's interesting because I, I put one in. And when you're ready, I will tell you my track story. Um, well, I'm probably ready. So, I mean, and again, so I say that, right. And, and I, I, I probably, depending on how you listen to my tone of voice, when I talked about, you know, the horse with the, um, kind of the run in, you know, um, stall paddock, you know, pen thing. And, and it might've sounded a little judgy. And if your horse has that, I'm not, please remember, as I talk today, I am not telling anybody that they're doing a bad job by their horse, right? We're just here to talk about options and try to get really clear on like what's actually going on. And, and when we're, if we're doing the best that we can, well, then that's the best that we can. Right. I, I know, don't happen. Yeah. Sorry, Heather, I didn't mean to interrupt, but, um, but the thing that's so interesting with, with my horses is they were out 24 seven. Okay. They were in a field 24 seven and I would drive in and find them in the shed. And I, I was consistent. I would drive in and find them in the shed and I put in a track system and it was not complicated. And I no longer found them in the shed, which is really, so even if the horse has a, has the whole field, the three of them, there's three of them. Now there's two of them, but there was three of them at the time is that they would stand in the shed. And I don't know why the bugs aren't any different with a track system than they are without a track system, but with a track system, they were not in the shed. Now they had access to it all the time. They just don't live there anymore, which is one of the most interesting things I found about putting in a track system when they had a whole field that they could be anywhere they wanted. It changed their behavior. Yeah, it's fascinating, right? I mean, the, the more I, again, I've been a vet for 24 years now, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like the more I learn, the less I know about them. Like there's just so many beautiful mysteries to be solved. And, and again, every horse isn't the same. I am sure that there are horses out there for whom a track system does not work. Uh, I know that there's a lot of situations, management situations, um, that, you know, where a person can't put in a track system for, for any number of reasons, even if it's their own property. Um, and that's okay, but like they, they really do seem to encourage movement. Um, and, 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 and I'm not sure of all the reasons why, um, but that's one way we can do that. I mean, another, another way that we can maybe do that would be, you know, if, if the horse, if we need to throw hay, even though they're in a big paddock, we can, you know, it's easier for the human to throw the hay all in like one or two spots. But if we can maybe get out there with a wheelbarrow or a tractor or something and put the hay in lots of different spots, well, that's going to encourage the horses to move around a bit more, we hope. But again, then you watch, right? And maybe there's one hay pile that they never, ever go to. Well, you might want to figure out why, you know, like, is it wet over there or does it smell like coyotes over there or who knows, you know? Um, but that's another thing that a person can do. And again, just your, that, your, it's classic, right? Your horse has had the big paddock. And then I tell people, so, okay, so you provide them with the environment, but then watch them. Are they using it the way you hoped? And yours were not. No, it was, it was so fascinating. And the other thing I realized is, I, I, I don't mean this badly, but they weren't as smart as I thought they were. Um, and the reason I say that is I made a spiral to the water. And so it, um, and I've made, that was in the beginning and I've done different patterns now. Okay. But in the beginning um, I would make a spiral. And so for them to get back to the gate, they had to go away from the gate to get back to the gate. And the idea of going away from the gate to get around, to come back to the gate took a long time. They finally figured it out, but it took a long time. Well, okay. And you know, smart, right? 
like they've never in their lives and probably not in any of their ancestors lives going back quite a few generations has anybody ever asked them to problem solve in that way right in fact in fact in many barn situations in many horse ownership management situations that kind of critical thinking and problem solving is frowned upon if not outright punished yeah. right yeah and for, for generations, right? And we know now, I mean, I don't want to go too far off topic, but you know me, I can, woo, you know, out there. You, so you interrupt me anytime and bring me back in. But you know, we we know, we know, you know, even um, traditional standard medicine now talks about epigenetics and generational effects on um, the uh, uh, expression of your, of your DNA and of your genes, right? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, us hippies have talked about that for a long time. We talk about like the that there are seven, gener we carry around seven generations, right? With like the present time being like our trunk. And then as you go down, you know, so that's one, right? And then there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And so that with the last little bit being seven generations back and that it's in there. So that's like kind of like the woo way to look at it. But um, even non-woo, decidedly unwoo. Uh, scientists have talked about um, previous generations and what happens uh, having an effect on the expression of your DNA. So you got to think about that when we talk about horses, right? And I, you know, I know you're, you're, Wendy, you're one of the most, you know, wonderful people, I, you know, in terms of the way you talk about people and horses and non-judgmental and ha ha, yeah, he wasn't smart, but it's also like, Ooh, let's think about that. Right. Like the, what is intelligence? This horse is doing what works and walking away from the gate to get to the gate was just never a question that was ever even remotely posed. Right? Well, and that's, that was the thing is it's, it, they'd never been challenged in that way. And it was fascinating to see how long it took them to work it out and who worked it out better than who, right? Um, but what's really interesting now is they they look to see what have I done something with the system? Have I placed hay somewhere? And so Al being the the guy in charge, he goes out and he looks now. So it's they've been doing it for three years and I keep messing with the system. I've I've come up with a creative way to gate it and work with it so that I have a lot of options. Um, and, it's and then, so what, one of the, uh, Callie here in the chat, I noticed she was talking about uh, in her pasture boarding barn that the horses do better if they have at least two different pastures, right? So so if they have change, right? If they have change, but, but like, but what are we, what's drilled into us, you know, with horses is that like, we need a routine and that change is bad, right? Because like the number one cause of colic is change of any kind, right? You know, we can look at, you know, retrospect studies and and that's proven time and time again change in weather change in weight change in feed change in in environment you know change change in 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 herd dynamic all that is the number one predictor that that there's going to be you know colic not not to make everybody you know crazy and terrified of colic and so we need to think about the individuals who were were, were working with and 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 get to know them as individuals so that we understand their their resiliency and their ability to handle change. And we don't just take some horse who we know freaks out, you know, if, if, if they're, if they're main, if we ask their main to lie, you know, one piece of their main to lie a different way, or, you know, something like that. And we don't just suddenly like throw them into a, like into a track, into a complicated track system, right. That, that, that horse might freak out, not because he's an idiot or suicidal or all those stories that people tell around horses but just it's just not you know it's not in his nature and that that you know so we gotta well, go we gotta go step wise i think an easy way to think about it is if you've driven your car for a very long time and then you go somewhere and you have to rent a car and it's like 10 years newer than yours and you have to figure out i remember the first time i drove a prius i had no idea how to turn on i had to go back in and ask the guy Right. So it's kind of like the track system for my horse was kind of like me getting into a Prius. Now I drive a Prius. I love driving a Prius. Right. But the first time was like, how do you start it? <laughs> I still can't. My mom has a Subaru with one of those, you know, keyless things. My, my, my Toyota is, you know, old fashioned. Slid. And, and it's always, I'm, I'm trying to get into the car to get something out of it for her. And I'm like, I start dropping F-bombs because I have terriers and 
I'm like them. And, and you know, how the leap do we get in this car? Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? So, you know, but I'm I'm not stupid. Um right. pretty sure I'm not stupid. Uh so so right, so 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 a physically enriched environment and um um you know, we, we can start to do things for horses. Like, you know, if we can't have put in a track system and have, you know, a 20 acre field for them to play around in, or, you know, five different pastures to rotate them through, to keep their environment enriched in that way. Well, then what else can we do? And, you know, we, you know, the, all those horse toys, I mean, there's actually some horses who play with them, you know, the balls and the, and the, the, the bingies and stuff like that. And, and I'll also posit that like, if you just throw one of those toys into the horse's stall and expect him to figure out that that's a toy to play with. Well, you know, some horses will be like, oh, look at that. But maybe another horse, he might want to show him, hey, this could be fun, right? They'd, how would he know that's a toy, you know? Um, so we can, we can actually spend some time. I mean, you know, people play with their toys with their dogs, but sometimes some of those aspects of play uh, don't don't appear in people's relationships with their horses, and I actually just realized that this moment as I said it. And I and I don't I've got a lot of thoughts why I don't know the entire reason why I think there's a lot of reasons why. But like you know, introducing some play and some fun and some just silly stuff as long as it's safe physically. Well, you know. and I think I think that's the big piece is that you know, if a horse starts to see you as another horse to play with, that can be quite dangerous. So it's important to keep the horse-human relationship in play. Um, and there are some horses that, I have one, that has kind of lost that from an early age. He's now 20 um, and still can, even though he's small, can be unsafe if he gets, like, he'll buck and kick and play up a lot. And so yeah, so there's a there's always that safety factor that one has to take into consideration, right? That's always the piece. Sure, for sure. Um, and and you know, I I sort of harbor this secret. Um, not I guess not going to be a secret anymore. As soon as I say, it. not if you say it on my webinar. <laughs> you know, you know uh, a whole lot of even professional horse people, even experienced horse people out there, are, are actually afraid of horses. Um, and I'm not saying that again to call anybody out or wag any fingers. I'm just saying it so that, you know, when we're watching people who are so-called experts and we see what they do and maybe there's something in our gut that says, oh, that doesn't really seem right. You know, hmm, is it possible this person is actually afraid of the horse? Now, I, that doesn't mean to you know be stupid and not have respect for the fact that the horse could kill you when they are trying to, you know, tap it, grab it a fly. But that's different respect for 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 them and the and, and our own safety and and how we're going to physically interact safety safely is is quite different from being afraid and i i just i told you I, I, early on i was down in lexington kentucky and you know i mean those are some experienced horse people i worked with down there and i'll tell you what i was shocked I, that i started to realize that there were there were a number of people who actually were afraid and and i'm pointing that out because that can often be where some of the um uh, some of the harsher aspects of so-called horsemanship can come in. And I'm trying not to use the word sadism um, or, or or physical abuse, but I guess I just did. You just did. Um, well, I, it, you know, I always say abuse begins right? where, where you run out of choices, right? And so if you, so if you're running out of choices and this horse is appearing threatening to you, it it's hard to keep that, you know, I, and I, okay. The other thing that I often say is, you know, people talk about predator prey and I'm like, well, if I take you out on safari on a horse and there is a lion and you have no gun, guess who's the pink squishy thing without fur that's nicely marbled. And so I, I think we often forget that we are also prey. Right. And so I, I actually would rather call a horse a flight animal because that's how it behaves typically when it senses danger is to try and flee that's going to be its first response whereas a person could have an aggressive response they could have they could have a terrifying you know they could they could try and flee they could have all the same behaviors but uh, you know because we can make tools because we can make tools that can hurt others um we tend to think that we're the predator but honestly you know, I used to say if I took oh, a city in Harlem, which when I was a kid, that was a not a safe place to go. 
<laughs> like if we went to Miller's tax shop, you had to walk past a seedy neighborhood and believe me, you, you know, you realize that, oh, so, so I think so many people hide their fear in behaviors that are aggressive. Yes, I, I'll agree with that. I'm I'm sorry I don't want to overtake your webinar on some other topic, but I um that that was that made me a little uncomfortable talking about um Harlem and seedy neighborhoods, and so I just need to acknowledge that 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 kind of made me a little uncomfortable, um, which is a whole other topic that has nothing to do with horses. But I'm gonna say it, and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move on. So I don't. Oh, well, it's changed a whole lot. It's not what it was. Yeah, it has, but you know, um, any any anyway, okay. um. Anyway, so so yeah, so yes to all the things that 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 you said about that. So so again, all I'm 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 encouraging people to get curious. I don't have all the answers, not even by half. The most everybody I meet is smarter than I am on on a lot of these things. So, um, but get curious, ask questions. If something doesn't see, look right, you know, find out. Now you can't always ask the person about it because again, if they're afraid and they're being maybe a little aggressive with the horse, it's unlikely they're going to be nice and soft and sweet and explanatory to you. So protect yourself in that way too. But you know, but you can still just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, I notice, and then go home and don't just say because that person has some status or that you paid to be in their clinic, that doesn't mean that everything that they say and do is, is always correct. So just so remember check is the thing to do. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Understand that you don't know everything. So they might know, so, you know, allow that they might know something you don't. Uh, and again, like you said, sometimes, I mean, I have definitely been around horses where what they understand is, you know, like a a, a wrap, like I'll, I'll, I'll wrap a, if I use a chain, I'll wrap it. They called it a stallion shank in Kentucky, where uh, it's an eight, like at least about an 18 inch chain and it'll come up well, I, this is reversed on the Zoom, but anyway, you know, you'll come up down by the nose band on the near side, and then it'll come down the nose band on the uh, off side, and then it'll go under their chin, and then come up again on the near side and clip, you know, on the uh, on the back of the halter, so that so that you're not right, you're not moving the halter around like this, but you can put it, and and you're also not sawing on their nose, right? But if you need to, it just it puts a squeeze on them, you know, puts a squeeze down on them. And definitely there are some horses and we could then go off to another tangent and talk about, you know, the five elements and, you know, what kind of personality types and, you know, a wood horse is controlled by metal. Um, I feel like I've got enough experience at this point where I usually have a pretty good idea when that kind of a chain is actually going to give me the sort of communication that that horse will understand most clearly. And then, then it becomes not abuse. Um, well, and I think what people have to realize with that too, is in Kentucky, you're dealing with breeding stallions that are going to the breeding shed. So they are very excited at that point and not necessarily listening to their human. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but and so they, and that's why they call it a stallion shank. But I, if I use a chain, that is the only, well, that is, that is 90% of the time how I'm going to use a chain if I do. And I, and I like it just because it gives that gentle squeeze. But again, but some people, they see me, you know, go for a chain, which again, doesn't happen often people just to be clear. Like, but when it does, I guess people, but you're a holistic vet. And I'm like, and, and this horse weighs 1500 pounds. So, you know, I need a little help. Right. So we figure out the right way. Um, it's not okay to, you know, you know, yelling and waving your hands, but sometimes you, yes, you do have to use strong language with some horses to, um, to stay for, for both of you to stay safe. Um, any, at any rate, I think we've talked a bit about the physical, right. I didn't talk about things like hay nets and slow feeders. Um, some of the, you know, hay pillows, some of those things can help, right. Give us some physical enrichment because the horse then is eating hay more slowly, um, uh, the, you know, um, grazing muzzles that have a little hole in them. Um, I, I feel really conflicted about hay nets. I know sometimes that they are the, the right choice or the, the best choice in a situation. Um, when they make a horse put their head up like this, it does a lot of stuff to their neck and their AO joint and their teeth and their dentition and that I don't always like, but sometimes that is the right answer. Well, and that's where, you know, when I talked to Sharon May Davis, that was um, 
she was pointing out that horses are 20% browsers and 80% grazers. And if they, uh, the hay net can be used to develop, to enhance a browsing moment, it depends, it, you know, so much of what we're talking about so depends on the situation, doesn't it? I mean, it's like, yes. if they're only ever eating on the ground, a hay net could be really good because it's browsing, right? But if they're only ever eating in a hay net, not getting to eat on the ground would be it, you know, and I, and I think that hay pillows are my, I love my hay pillows, but two things. One, if your horse has shoes on, I wasn't going to use it because I didn't want him to get caught in it. And when the bear came by, he ripped the net out of all three hay pillows over two nights. And yeah. they are not designed to handle a bear. <laughs> and no, I don't know not. why the bear ripped the hay net. I, I don't know why does why does a bear yeah that's all I'm sure there's some jokes oh there. yeah <laughs> so so yeah exactly right so so you know and again that's when when I started I said listen we're going to talk and talk and we're going to understand that there's 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 multiple ways to phrase the question much less answer it so um but what I want to stress with people is like get curious and start thinking you know and you know there's a lot of horses where that's all the only place they ever eat is out of a hay net and then you know and then there's all these problems and people then you know go like oh why and they but you know put two and two together okay this is this is why i don't know if you can do something about it or you can't but this is why right and so then that might be a horse that needs if if there's no other solution that might be a horse who needs more regular you know manual therapy massage chiropractic surefoot pad something to help you so, know, I still so don't think it's great for them. They're mental, emotional, right? Because, because, because this doesn't, this stimulates their digestion in a much different way than this, right? You know, the head down stimulates gastric juices and all of that. So, I mean, I might be digressing, but. Um, well, no, I, I think what you're saying is, you know, we so often get into a routine in our environment and we don't stop to think about whether or not we can put variety into that routine, that physical routine. And I think that's what I'm hearing is, take a moment to evaluate your physical routine look to see if there isn't some place where you can make some change to bring in more variety so that it's not just the same thing over and over and over again even when you're leading your horse okay i know you know we lead a horse from the left well does the world come to an end if we lead a horse from the offside and you know here's a question can you do it? I know that I can't even get on my bicycle <laughs> from the outside. <laughs> so that's information about me, right? So, um, you know, let's remember, right? There, there's custom and everything, but like, how about how about leading the horse from the offside? And I know everybody at your barn is going to go. <gasps> <laughs> Oh, okay. Just smile and the, oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, gee. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But you know, I mean, I, and, and again, if you have a horse who does, who freaks out, then, then be careful about trying that because it might freak them out. Um, and what about getting, you know, mounting from the offside again, I can't even get on my bike. So, but you know, these are the kinds of things, right? We, this is the way we, this is the way we do it. Right. And that's the way we do it. Well, why? And is that still a valid reason today? right? It's because we always did it. That, I mean, I got that in Kentucky. Um, how come you're doing this way? Well, that's the way we always done it, doc. And I'm kind of like, you know, I, it, it, you bring up a really good point. And, and I think one of the things about the horse world is we're so, we, it's been around for so long, but it's been around for so, so long. Like, uh, you know, think about when snowboarding showed up, right? And everybody was like on two skis, but they adopted snowboarding and, and it developed into a really interesting sport. Um, but we, you know, our relationship with horses and the, and the way the traditions that have been passed down, it, it's been so long. And so it's, I think that just is one of the reasons why doing non-traditional things is a little more difficult I just came back from the UK and it was really interesting doing a non-traditional thing in a very traditional barn. Mm, I bet it was. Yeah. I bet it was. So, yeah, I mean, again, yes, things to think about. Why, why, you know, do, do you think that every horse on the planet, you know, needs to be led from the left? Um, you know, so, yeah. So lot, lots, lots of stuff to just sort of think about and, um, and play around with. Let me, let me see. Cause like, uh, like, 
I, I can always talk to you like forever and ever and ever. <laughs> um, but what's another thing? So we, we talked a lot about physical and I actually think, you know, we see, we've got like mental, emotional and, and mental and emotional are, are definitely different. Um, but maybe we can sort of talk about them together uh, just for the purposes of, of clarity, but, you know, a physical, mental, and emotional um, state of wellness and, and preventive care and, and enrichment. And so what, what enriches that horse's emotional life, you know, and, and, and that might sound like a weird question to ask, right? When's the last time anybody said, what's your horse's emotional life like? Um, I haven't, I haven't heard anybody talk about that, but do we doubt that they have one? I mean, except for, no, it's a great question. So I, I'm wondering why you want to separate mental and emotional. And if so, what, what, how do you, how, what is your definition of mental and what is your definition of emotional for horses? Probably mental is a little bit more talking about, um, cognition and learning, uh, horses, horses definitely have cognition and cognitive abilities. I think more often they're making decisions on um, more esoteric and subtle cues that might blend more into the emotional. And I, and I don't know that it's a real valid separation to say that mental is more cognitive. It probably isn't, but um, you know, sort of problem solving uh, types of things is, is their mental well being. Uh, right. And so giving them when you're, when, if you're interacting with your horse, you know, giving them, giving them new problems to solve that you never ask them questions that you never, ever asked them before, you know, um, don't, don't make it too hard. Cause again, don't freak them out, you know, set them up for success, but don't make it too easy either, you know, make it a little hard. And if they struggle like your horses with the yeah. spiral in the gate, right. That was, that's a ton of information. Like I'll bet you learned a ton about your horses, watching them sort out that problem. Yes. And, and who, who figured it out and who didn't? Yes. Yeah. And I feel like, so, so that them figuring that out, that was their kind of mental abilities and their mental, um, their mental selves at work, um, how they responded to the challenge would be more of their emotional selves. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Right? Too. Yeah. Because, um, like, I don't know what the, you know, you get some animals who are kind of like, I don't know how to figure this out. Oh my God, the sky is falling. I'm going to die. Right. And another one's like, oh, I don't know how to figure this out. Huh? Well, right, I I'll try exactly again. have not, exactly those two problem. different ones. Right. Right. Like, yeah. The one so, is like, okay, I have to figure this out. And Al, and he figures it out. Whereas Dunny would get hysterical and emotional. Right. Because he's like, I just follow Al. And now I can't follow him. He's somewhere else. <laughs> and Al is still very emotional. He's just not emotive. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. There's all right. We talk about all those, you know, phrases about still waters run deep. We know those horses. We know those horses have a lot going on. Um, they don't, they don't give us the outward behavior, but they still have rich emotional lives. Uh, they can be harder to figure out, you know, what their emotions are. Right. You know, the, the one who was like, kind of overtly ah, ah, sky is falling. You're like, well, I know what you're feeling right now. Yes. <laughs> um, and, but, but, but the other one, you know, a little, little harder to know what he's feeling. I don't want to put anything on him. Right. I don't want to say, oh, he's internally freaking out. No, I don't know. Maybe he really is every bit as calm and cool about it as his outward appearance is, but we, we just, we can't assume that. Right. We can't assume that it's just never fair to assume that. So, um, so enriching their mental and emotional lives probably has a lot to do with their physical. And, you know, here's newsflash, you know, people talk about the mind body connection, but that, that like, that makes it sound like they're two separate things that have to be yoked together. Your mind is your body and your body is your mind. So you really, they're, they're not separate in any way. Um, and so if we are supporting the physical body, in every way that we can, then we are, we're also doing a pretty good job of the mental and emotional um, body, if you will, if we look at that as, as, as different bodies. Um, they're, they're, they're right. Cause horses need to move. I think they really, most horses do benefit from some amount of problem solving. And again, if you can't set up a track system, I don't know. Just get out there. Get curious. I don't, I don't. I don't have any answers on this for how to set up. You know how to figure out how to set up some questions for your horse. Um, and 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 sometimes it's when you're there. But if gosh, if you could set up questions for them that don't involve you, 
that's really great for them, right? Because we want them to be comfortable. We want them to love us, of course. And, and, and we want them to want to be with us and engage with us and play the games that we want to play, whether it's, you know, riding, hunter, jumper, you know, whatever. Um, but, but we also want them to be comfortable on their own. And we, we want them to be able to take care of themselves because let's face it, most of them are alone most of the time. Most of us are not hanging out in the stall or the paddock for, you know, 20 hours a day. Most of us have to go, you know, earn a living or take care of dogs or children or, you know, other family, whatever. We all have stuff that we have to do. And, and, and so we want our horse to be confident when we're not around. So thinking about ways that you might play around with their environment to even give them some mental, uh, some mental challenges and pay close attention to what that does to their emotional body. Um, and, and, and again, then you're getting to know your horse. It's all information. I don't have an answer, but when we collect information and stay curious about it, um, that's, that's when the, the magic happens. Um, I'm going to go to the social next just because um spiritual might be a little um a, 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 even a little harder for people to to maybe not maybe not your people but um we know that horses have have social needs right they're they are herd animals and so does your horse have the ability to interact physically with other horses and 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 if they have the opportunity to do that do they interact with the other horses that they have access to? And if so, how do they interact with those other horses? You know, do they engage in mutual grooming? Do they show each other the best patches of grass or where the dandelions are when, when it's springtime? Um, did I lose you? No. Nope, okay. I am right here. Okay. Uh, I do, every once in a while, I'm out in the country. Every once in a while, the Wi-Fi freezes up. Um, uh, you know, a lot of horses, especially the valuable ones or the crazy ones, right? We we restrict their access to other horses. And we we certainly, we, we generally do the choosing for them. You know, if we can't have, say, a band of 20 horses in a big giant field, then we're making decisions about what two or three or six horses get turned out together. And, um, you know, I don't know about the rest of you out there, but, um, I'm pretty picky who I like to hang out with. And in most rooms full of people, I'm, I'm feeling pretty alone out there. Uh, and that's no judgment on anybody else or any of you. It's just that me, like I just, you know, so I can have access to sociability, but if they're not my people, I'm not feeling very social and my, my social needs are not getting met. Uh, in fact, the opposite, right? I'm starting to withdraw socially if I'm constantly out with people who, um, you know, who are not my people. Uh, so we want to think about your horse. Who does your horse want to be around? Um, who do they interact with? We talk about dominance, right? We talk about like the lead mare and wild herds. Well, we know that there's, it's, it's not complete dominance, right? And I, I mean, I, I got to watch that. I had two, two mares and one of them was definitely the leader, unequivocally the leader in certain situations. And the other one was unequivocally the leader in other situations. And I, I, I got to observe them enough that I went, I, I could start to predict who was going to, who was going to step up in what kind of situation. And, um, and that was really cool to learn that about them and to watch them and to give them the ability. And it was, I was lucky. They really seemed to hit it off. Um, but that's not always the case. No. And it's really interesting if like, I, I've had a herd of five to two. Right. I mean, it's varied. Divorces have come and gone or somebody's passed or whatever. And it's always fascinating to watch, to see how the dynamic shift when uh, one comes in or one goes out um, and how there's very clearly different types of relationships like um, Dunny and Andy were, they would graze nose to nose and were always like paired together. And like Al is now stuck with Dunny, who is his pest. <laughs> He's always been a pest, but now Al is like, Ugh, I have the pest because the mayor is gone. She passed. So, you know, it's it's fascinating to watch the group dynamics uh, when one comes in or one goes out. And I think that we don't, um, again, like you said, we're so worried about, oh, they're going to get hurt. But if we, 
that's because we've interrupted the dynamics where things can flow. And so now it's like, um, you know, they're, they're ha they haven't had their natural way to, to meet and greet, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's right. brought yeah. and, to, and to work things out and, and they have no history if they haven't practiced being social. Yeah. yeah like there's a lot of horses that haven't practiced being social. They haven't practiced. And how would they be good? That would be like a kid who was homeschooled, you know, an only child who was homeschooled by their, you know, to grandmother when they're like 40s or 50s you know and then all of a sudden when they're like 15 you're going to send them to high school how well how would that kid do not <laughs> not right not so you know look at the horses and you know so again if we're going to try if, if you know you're going to watch this webinar and then go oh my god my horse needs sociability well okay but be smart about it you know don't just do it think about it you know you know, we don't want them to get hurt. And, um, and, you know, it, sadly, you might not get a lot of support if you're in a boarding situation, you know, you might not get a lot of support. And there's a lot of reasons for that, right? You know, people who run boarding facilities have a, a, a lot of different concerns. Um, so uh, again, I'm not shaming you if your horse can't be in a paddock with another horse, it just can't, can't happen. I don't know, but maybe, maybe they can be in a paddock next to another horse and maybe you well, can, you know. And I was going to say in a food. barn setting, it's really important that you like their neighbors. Because if they don't like their neighbor, they're going to be very stressed. Yes. And so, and so how do we learn this, right? Time. There's no replacement. We have to spend time. We have to go and watch our horses, not just, and I'm not accusing anybody here of doing this but you know there are definitely a lot of horse people who even if even if they don't have the horse um groomed and tacked up for them they show up they get the horse they they groom it him her they groom her you know they put on her tack or they whatever equipment they're going to use they go and they do their exercise or they do their hand walking and you know maybe throw them a couple of cookies and then they go and that's it Right. And that's the half an hour, hour, maybe it's two hours, you know, that, that you've, that you've spent with your horse. And again, I get it. People have busy, busy, busy lives, busy lives. I get it. I get it. I get it. But consider that um, you might really enhance your relationship in the saddle or on the other end of the line or whatever it is you're doing with your horse um, by interacting with your horse you know, in a, in, in, in such a, a non way, right. By, by simply observing. I don't, I think that's what and, I'm trying to say. You know what? It, it kind of reminds me of, um, so when I, this is going back a long time in 1984, when I was in the hospital, I was there in traction. My doctor would show up at the door, but he would be in his bomber jacket and he would just look in and he'd ask me how I was versus someone who would even if it was five minutes, walked in the door and actually looked at me. And so, you know, so I think some people are probably freaking out. I don't have the time to spend, you know, all day. Walk. But it, it, it can be something as simple as the five minutes of really observing, not being on your phone, not talking to your friends, not, um, not uh, you know, be in the room is kind of, you know, the doctor that came in the room and actually faced me because my nurses started telling me I was getting addicted to my drugs because the doctor didn't bother to figure it out, you know? And they were the ones, you have to tell your doctor to change your drugs because you're getting addicted. Okay, that's a problem when your nurses are telling you to tell you that you have to tell your doctor, right? But that, that it was that very, in, like, like distance. And if he had just come in, so I think, um, you know, even if you have a short period of time, Get in the room, <laughs> be there. Like you said, five minutes, five minutes, just five minutes. Go, you know, if you're going in the stall or, or you're, you're going out, if your horse is turned out, you know, instead of, you know, coming in and marching to wherever they are, you know, maybe just stand there for five minutes and watch your horse. Where is your horse? What is your horse doing? Does your horse notice that you're there? Is your horse hanging out with, you know, the gray in the corner? Is your horse off? By themselves somewhere else you know if you call to your horse do they hear you you know does that mean anything if you're going to them in the stall yeah and like five minutes where you're not you know handing them cookies right um and you're not 
you know, thinking about what kind of ride you're going to have that you're just asking, like, you know, and you can even say it. I mean, people might think you're crazy. Well, you know, come join me because people think I'm crazy. <laughs> Whatever, you know, like, how are you today, Al? How are you today, Al? You know, does he know what those words mean? Probably not. But if you really mean it, and so it's, then it's going to come from you and he's going to know, he doesn't know what words you're saying, but he's going to realize that you're actually paying attention to him and you have no expectation other than him to give you some sort of a response. And again, if you've never done that before, yeah. then the first time you do it, be prepared for your horse to either ignore you or, you know, start mugging you for treats or, and, you know, but then we don't just give up and say, oh, oh all he wants is treats. Well, yeah. Cause that's, you know, if that's the shtick that you've, you've gotten with him, then he's used to it. Right. So you need to, you know, you need to let, give him some time to realize that you've changed it up. Right. Give him some time to catch up, give him the memo, you know, let him give him some time to absorb it and read it and be like, Oh, we're going to interact differently today. Okay. Give him, give him plenty of room to do that and keep trying, be persistent. And, and just, I don't know what you're going to find out, but neither do you. Yeah. And, and you make a really good point. Um, it's not just a one-time thing. It's, you've got to, show up and show up regularly with that idea of I'm just going to watch my horse for five minutes and let him show me what's going on with him today or let me see how he interacts with his friends today or let me see what he does in his environment today right just that that five minutes but consistent it it, it like so so again I you know I always like to talk about how I don't think we're all that we, we like to think we're all we're all so different from horses, right? Because like we have you know these giant coconuts we're lugging around and you know we we you know either people either say the horses are perfect and people are jerks or they say that you know people are so smart and horses are dumb and suicidal and you know all of those words blah 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 that people like to say and it's like well that's interesting but we're, we're not really all that different in any way shape or form I look at my behavior sometimes and I think wow maybe I'm trying to commit suicide you know why did I why did I eat that piece of cheesecake you know um not one healthy didn't make me feel good but I you know, I ate it so um when I I used to jog and uh, I won't call it running, but I would jog and, you know, man, I didn't, I, I, I did I enjoy it? Uh, I never liked starting, you know, and, but I, I just made it a habit and I did it right. And, and hopefully this will make sense in a second. Like, so I would play, a, I would play a little game with myself and I would just say that um, if on well, days when I really didn't want to go, I would say, well, I'm just going to put on my running shoes and I'm going to go out for five minutes. And if after five minutes, I still feel like this is for the birds, I, I'll go home. I'll stop and I'll go home. And like is not after five minutes, I was either feeling great and I went on the full run or after five minutes, I'm like, well, I could do five more. Let me see. And then sometimes after 10 minutes, I'll be like, mm, I'm done. And other times after five minutes, I'm like, no, you know what? I still, this still feels crummy. I don't want to do it. And I would go home. I would just let myself not go for a run that day. Right. I had when, and so in order for it to work, I had to actually be honest with myself and and follow through and let myself not go for the run that day right otherwise the whole game of like go for five minutes and see how you feel i'd be like Haha, i know what you mean you're, you're gonna go for five minutes and to go for an hour you're lying to um, yourself yeah exactly well, and, and now, now you know welcome into my brain like you know now you sorry you might all be running away clicking off the webinar and running um screaming but anyway do you understand why i'm saying this right so when you go to ask that question of your horse like hey al how are you doing today and you know if al is like you know what like, I, I don't, I don't want anything that you've got today. I'm just, I'm really not interested. Then, you know, maybe accept it. And maybe even though you wanted to go do a certain ride, maybe, maybe don't, you know, and maybe just grab a brush and groom them a little bit and say, okay, we'll do that. And I understand that uh, sometimes there's a show or you've paid for a lesson. Okay. I get it. But like other times, Try, try to set up a life and a schedule that allows for not doing the thing that you planned on doing if your horse really tells you he doesn't want to. And then once your horse realizes that you're actually listening and it's a, actually a question, not, hey, Al, how you doing? Oh, here's your halter, let's go, right? But it's actually, hey, Al, how you doing? Well, you know what, Wendy, I'm, I'm really feeling kind of crummy today. I don't really you know, I didn't sleep well last night and, you know, what's his name was a pest and bugging me. And, you know, 
And if you then go like, wow, Al, sounds like you're feeling kind of punky. Hey, how about if I just groom you today? Or how about if we just go for a walk to the back 40 and there's that really great patch of grass? How about if we just do that? Yeah, okay, Wendy, thanks. Right? And then like, if you start doing that, if you actually, whatever it is, you know, I'm just giving like supposes, but if if you actually start acting like they have a choice, I think you're going to find you have a much happier and more willing partner. And, and so again, we're not talking about sure foot pads, right? But what have I told you? One of the things that I love so much about the way you counsel people to use sure foot pads is that it's always a choice. We offer the pad to the horse, right? How many, we've heard her say this a million times people, right? You offer the pad to the horse. And there's definitely people out there using pads in protocols and that's fine too. There's times for that. But the way Wendy generally counsels people to use it, you offer the pad to the horse and no is a completely acceptable answer, right? We get curious about what's going on and why, you know, we don't always know why the horse is responding a certain way, but he is. So, okay. We like, we take that. And if he just says no, 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 fine, that's fine. And then the horse starts to go like what I've seen happen. I feel like I've seen the horses just go like, no, nobody's ever let me say no before, you know? And then I find horses who are like, what else, what do you need lady? What is it? Like, you want the shirt on my back? I'll get, I could say no. <laughs> this is fantastic. Right. It, yeah. But it's so true. And, you know, no doesn't mean forever. No is just simply in that moment. Right. <laughs> I think that that's the problem is no. People think no is like, OK, that's it. It's written in stone. It's, it's like, no, you know, like, no, I need to rebalance or no, I, I you know, I got I got distracted or oh, I, oh, no, I. I want this, you know, it's, I want this pad or I want to do it on that foot or I want it on know, that I foot. I just, yeah. Fine. You know, and so just like, just start asking questions and see what their answers are. And I just, man, I, I, that just never gets old. That's, I mean, life with animals, they, they tell me so much when, when I just stop doing what I'm doing in this webinar and close my mouth and <laughs> open my ears right but he, that, that that's what y'all paid for is to to i think to listen to but right so 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 let me let me let me look one more time see. all right because i know we're, we're gonna run out of time but anyway so you know um maybe that actually is a perfect lead in to um the spiritual life of a horse do horses have a spiritual life I don't know. You know, it depends. I guess it, part of it depends on your definition, um, right? And so I think that that's that's the key is what what do you consider spiritual? So I, I know that. Um, so when when Andy passed, what we what we do? I wasn't home, but what uh, it was a long story about that. But um, they brought the other horses out to see his body, to know whether or not he was gone. And Al went over and waffled his ears. And um, it was very clear that there was a connection there, a passing over to Al. Um, so they, they clearly recognized death. Um, and what's fascinating is not, not when he went, but when my, when backing up a few horses, when Fanny, died she passed hay dunking to the other horses in the barn who did not do it as tidily as she did <laughs> but it passed it passed through so um you know i don't know that it's they have the same cognizant sense of it but there's cognition is very different from ours right but there is clearly a something i don't know even know what to put a word on but there is a something to me, the, the spiritual layer or the spiritual body, it's, it's, it, it could just be whatever's left over that doesn't fit into mental, emotional, um, phys physical, mental, emotional, and social. Right. Um, you know, and, and I mean, I, I know that there's a whole big bucket still left after we've filled those other four. Um, I, it's not, 
for me, it's not a belief. It's a, it's a knowing I, I know it. I I've, I've felt it. I've, I've experienced it firsthand. I'm lucky enough to have, um, I'm lucky. Yeah. And, um, they, 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 yeah. So I, I know that they have a spiritual life and, um, and I invite watchers of the webinar to consider if you aren't sure, if nobody has ever posed, posed that question to you, um, I am now posing that question to you and I invite you to get curious and decide what spiritual means to you and, um, you know, consider whether your horse has a spiritual life. And if so, how would you support that, support that spiritual life being healthy? Um, it, it certainly isn't going to be going to church you know, or temple or, um, any of the other, right. I don't want to, you know, well, it, it's the, the, those are our practice of religion, religious right? expressions of spirit, right. Whereas a horse, again, that's a construct. I don't think that the horses have, but they have, but there's something. Um, and I think it's probably, uh, better to leave it sort of open. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I hope this is, I, you know, I, I love talking to you, Wendy. I could talk to you every day. Um, I hope that everybody watching um, has gleaned some useful tidbit or other. So if um, you were to give them what one little, little assignment, what would it be? One little thing they could do. I think what we talked about uh, just a few minutes ago, um, start making a, a habit, if you don't have it already, of, of spending five minutes. And if five minutes feels interminable, then start with two yeah. minutes where you're you're in the presence of your horse, not requesting them to do anything, not even requesting that they acknowledge you. You can invite them to acknowledge you. Hey, Al, how are you today? If he doesn't answer, that's all right. Still stay there for the two minutes or, you know, I'd like you to work up to five. But again, if, and if two minutes is too much, do it for 60 seconds. I don't care. Start wherever you can. Um, and, and, and again, maybe some days you have the five minutes, maybe some days you even have 10 and maybe other days you only have 60 seconds, but like promise yourself minimum 60 seconds in the presence of your horse, not asking them to do anything other than be their own delicious, beautiful selves. And um, I don't know, maybe start in, if you do comments in your webinars, start to put down what, what you notice. Yeah, you could be, yeah, they can put comments in the webinars. You know, and I, I, I actually, um, in, in listening to you say that, I, the thought that comes to me is that we're going to benefit far more than they will. <laughs> Probably funny how that works, isn't it? Most acts of altruism are ultimately um, selfish. Yes. Yes. Now y'all know. <laughs> now y'all know the real me. Yeah, um, you know, some people, Ellen, it's really hard for them to carve out five minutes. There's the, the barn situations they might be in or just their family life. Um, you know, I find it sometimes hard. I mean, like Brad's been feeding the horse the past couple of nights, right? Horses the past couple of nights. I can't even get, get over there because there's so much going on. So, um, so yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I know in my own life, things get so hectic and so busy with so many plates spinning in the air that sometimes I'm actually better off not going over there. So they don't experience my crazy. <laughs> and that can be a choice too. recognizing, even though you might want to see your horse, maybe you're not fit to be around your horses today. And then don't let that go on too long. If that goes on, then, then you need to figure out what, you know, yeah. What that, what, is, what that, that is too. Yes. yes. Right. Figure that out. Don't ask them to figure it out for you right? They do enough for us. Don't ask them to figure it out for you, but figure it out. And um, yeah, just, uh, yeah. 
Awesome. That's, that's well, different. I can see from the comments that people are figuring out what we're saying, which is awesome. So, you know, um, give yourself the opportunity this week. I'm going to have to carve out some time to give myself that opportunity this week because uh, Heather, Ed, everything that I tell my clients and people to do, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm going like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Starting here. So I say all these things aspirational. I can go watch the recordings later and say, see what you said, Heather, like, what you think? <laughs> make sure you, do that. um, yeah, yeah, that's, we're all works in progress, right? And yeah, if we absolutely. can forget, it, we can't forgive ourselves for being imperfect. How will we ever be able to forgive our horses for being imperfect? Yep. So, so true. sounds simple. So it's okay it to be simple, perfectly, mind. perfect, imperfectly. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. All right. Well, well thank, I, you, Heather. thank you. This has just been, it's delightful to see you again. Uh, and um, if I don't, th I think this is only your second webinar. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got to do another one. So we make a playlist. Guess who do three webinars, get a playlist. Uh oh, watch out everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I really appreciate. I, I I love you know. I, I'm I'm listening and I'm talking and I'm I am glancing at the chat and I'm really uh, thank you everybody for um for participating and being here and you know again I I I do take my own advice in that I'm curious and I know I don't have the answer. So yes, Gail, you can sit down now. <laughs> oh oh dear, yeah, Gail, how did how was that, huh? That was because that was an hour. That was almost an hour ago that I told you all to stand up. Yeah, was it hard? Yeah, I, I couldn't do that because you wouldn't see me. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, standing around is hard work. It is for us and horses. Yep. She had yeah, to she had to that. Oh, and by the yeah. way, you know, it was really interesting. If you haven't watched Bettina Drummond's webinar, she talks about when she went to MSU to work with Hillary Clayton with the force plate and how even though the horse was standing still, it was not still. It was shifting weight on its feet, which was fascinating to find out about. So, you know, there we have this uh, really peculiar sense that still, actually, you know, when you're still, you're dead. That's the bottom line, <laughs> right? Uh, moving yeah. is life and, and something's moving if you're still alive. And so we are designed to move. So on that note, <laughs> Heather, thank, thank you, you so much for coming on tonight. It's a pleasure to see you and really enjoy listening it is my honor thank you for having me all right everybody we will be back next week with dr rachel bellini so stay tuned we'll put out an email on sunday and oh by the way um if you haven't signed up for my newsletter you gotta go to murdochmethod.com sign up for the newsletter so you get the weekly emails that tell you about the guests coming up on the webinars and we will see you all next week so thanks for joining bye good evening bye